Coming up on Network Africa. Muslims all over the world celebrate the Festival of Sacrifice, also known as Eid al adha U.S. First Lady Melania Trump announces plan to travel to Africa later this year. And over 70 people are arrested in a day of sporadic protest in Uganda. Welcome to the program, I'm Teniola Shobowale. Muslims all over the world are celebrating Eid al kabir a day set aside to commemorate the willingness of Prophet Ibrahim to follow Allah's command to sacrifice his son Ishmael, who was later replaced with a lamb. Also known as the Festival of Sacrifice, Eid al adha is the second of two Islamic holidays celebrated worldwide each year and considered the holier of the two. The Greater Eid also marks the end of Hajj, the first the five-day religious journey that takes Muslims to the Grand Mosque in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The day begins with a congregational prayer by Muslim faithfuls, followed by the slaughtering of animals, which could be a sheep or a goat, the meat of which is shared among friends, family and the poor. Meanwhile, Muslims in Lagos State, Nigeria, have been asked to embrace the values of sacrifice, love and unity as they join their counterparts worldwide to celebrate this year's festival. The messages were delivered by the chief imam of Lagos State and prominent Lagosians who converged at various prayer grounds to observe the Eid prayers. The Oba of Lagos State, His Royal Majesty Rilwan Akiolu, the former governors of Lagos, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu and Babatunde Fashola, and the Deputy Governor of Lagos, Ms. Idiat Adebule, joined other Muslims to observe the prayers at Dordan Barracks in Obalinde. This day would celebrate the power of sacrifice and wholesome obedience to God as Muslim faithful across the country, marking the Eid al-Kabir with prayers. In Lagos State, a Nigeria's commercial city, several prayer grounds receive a large turnout of Muslims offering supplications to Allah. After the prayers are said, they listen to admonitions from the clerics. The ram that we slaughter, Allah does not need it for anything. Neither does the, the, the horse, the blood, or the meat is useful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah is expecting for us is holistic fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adherents speak on the significance. So what we're doing is celebrating the submission to the will of Allah and that is why we sacrifice and kill the ram. While the event is marked with merriment, Citizen Sage is also a time for the leaders to address the myriad of challenges facing the country. U.S. First Lady Melania Trump has announced plans to travel to Africa later this year. She said in a statement that this will be her first time traveling to the continent and is excited to be educated on the issues facing children. Ms. Trump is expected to focus on humanitarian work and development programs being done in many of the countries. However, it is not clear what countries she will be visiting or when she plans on coming. She will not be traveling with her husband, U.S. President Donald Trump, who was criticized earlier for allegedly referring to some African nations derogatorily, though he denies. Let's get more on this story from an international affairs analyst, Calvin Dark. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. What could First Lady Melania Trump be hoping to achieve with her planned visit to Africa? Well, I think her main goal is to establish herself as First Lady and have a 
project or a series of projects that she's passionate about. Now, she's had a lot of difficulty doing that because it's very hard to do that when President Trump's persona and actions kind of suck up all the air in the room. But I will tell you what I don't think she's doing, and that is to try to smooth over the relations that President Trump has with African leaders and African countries. She's made clear that she is not trying to clean up President Trump's mess. So there are speculations in some quarters that the First Lady simply enjoys trolling the U.S. President. First, there's the issue of her Be Best campaign, then now her visit to a continent that the President called a derogatory term. What do you make of this, Calvin? Well, yes, she is definitely trolling, but her trolling only makes headlines and probably causes some friction in the White House residence. But it doesn't change policy, and it definitely doesn't affect President Trump's actions. What, what I think is happening here is, just as in yesterday, as President Trump was bullying people online, bullying the very people that are investigating him, she was giving a speech about helping children not be cyber bullies. So clearly her and the president aren't on the same page and they don't influence each other's actions or what they try to portray. So of what benefit is it to Africa if indeed the US First Lady does visit the continent? Well, I do think that wherever she goes and whatever cause she tries to champion, and we know that it'll involve children, I think that that could give very needed international attention and could help whatever the cause or area is. However, that'll only take place if President Trump and his administration can avoid controversy for long enough so that that doesn't overshadow it. But they are not pretty successful in doing that. What we have to watch out for is that even if Melania's trip is perfectly planned and executed, we know her husband might tweet or say or do something that directly contradicts it. He did the same thing with Secretary Tillerson in his pre-firing Africa trip. So there's no question why he wouldn't do that with Melania if it suits him. Okay, so President Trump is yet to make a trip to the African continent since coming to office in January 2016. Do you see the First Lady perhaps persuading him to do so in the near future? No, I don't believe that however successful this trip is, it will persuade President Trump one way or the other. What's important to remember is that in any other presidential administration, Republican or Democrat, a First Lady's trip would align with the administration's policies in Africa and support them and highlight them. But we don't know what President Trump's policies or strategies or plans are in Africa. So not only will this not affect a trip there, we're still a little unclear here in this country what the administration's goals are for Africa. Thank you so much, Calvin, for joining us on the program, International Affairs Analyst Calvin Duck. Thank you. Thank you.